Welcome to Electron Online. Before we start analyzing an RCL circuit that has a voltage driver, in other words, an alternating voltage source inside the circuit, we want to do a quick review of what an RCL circuit looks like without any initial, uh, I'm sorry, I should say without a, having a voltage driver in the circuit. So here's the equation that we, when we go around the circuit and we add up all the voltages across the circuit, they should add up to zero, and we have the voltage drop across the resistor, the voltage drop across the inductor, and the voltage drop across the capacitor. If we then uh, understand that current is simply the dq dt, and therefore the de derivative of the current, the change in current with respect to time, is therefore the second derivative of charge with respect to time, and we replace that in our equation right there, and then we divide both sides of the equation by a negative number to get rid of the negatives, and then we divide both, of this, both sides of the equation by L, this equation then becomes uh, the second derivative of the charge with respect to time plus uh, we have uh, that would be r over l that would be uh, r divided by l times dq dt and then we have plus 1 over lc times q and that adds up to zero like that so then our differential equation will then look like this so that same equation right here when we divide both sides by negative negative one divide both sides by l and replace every i by dq dt and every di dt by the second derivative rearrange terms it will look like that when we, when we have a, an RCL circuit like that and we initially start with the maximum charge in the capacitor and then we let the charge just oscillate back and forth and back and forth, we realize that the energy is going to be taken out of the circuit like that by the resistor. We know that then the oscillations should look something like this over time. If we have the amplitude of the oscillations and maybe we can think of it in terms of charge or in terms of current, we know that the amplitude will look something like this on an oscillating circuit, but it will diminish in oscillations and the, the rate at which it diminishes will be an exponential decay like that. So we have an exponential decay curve where the amplitudes will diminish on the oscillations of so the charges going back and forth, and that will be the solution to this equation. We can then say that uh, the charge as a function of time across a capacitor can be then expressed as the total charge, uh, Q max on the capacitor, times e to the minus, that would be r divided by 2l times the time, times the cosine of the square root of 1 over lc. That would be the frequency of oscillations if there was no resistor dampening the oscillations, but then it's going to be minus r squared divided by 4l squared times the time, plus of course any sort of phase angle if we don't start at t equals zero at a particular location. And so that would then be the equation describing the oscillations. The frequency right here is the frequency oscillations of the, uh, of the current flowing back and forth. And this would then be the exponential decay function that then diminishes the amplitude of the oscillations, the amplitude of the amount of charge on the capacitor um, as time goes on. So that's just a quick review. We have a, a video with a lot more detail on this particular topic, but I want to do a quick review in this series because next we're going to take a look at what the circuit will look like when we have something driving the voltage. Then our differential equation will look a little bit different and we'll then be able to, to compare it to what we have here when we don't have a voltage driver in the circuit. So there's a good introduction to that and stay tuned if you're interested in this kind of stuff because now we're going to take a look at the RCL circuit and how it behaves when we have a voltage driving the circuit.